Let's be interactive. Thank you. Okay, right, so thank you all for joining our Lunch and Learn. I'm just repeating because we're recording. And today I will hand over to Sarah Millard who will walk us through the process of how to monetize on online platforms. Please ask the questions and have fun with it. And let's Lunch and Learn. Sarah, over to you. Hey, wow. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, as, as Leslie would have said, I hope you all really do have your lunch here with you. Um, it's a really nice and short session, and I hope that we can get all this uh, done, uh, you know, to get the chance to see uh, what we're working with. Are okay. you guys seeing my screen? I am. Yes. Great. Great. Let me just go five. Should be good there. All right. So today's session really is. I would say all, all, it's all about monetizing yourself online. Um, a lot of this here comes from my learning of what would have happened over uh, the course of doing business. Um, so I'm just here really sharing this information here with you so that you know how to get to that stage and why you should be monetized and why you should register your online business and every single thing that goes in between there, all right? So we're gonna jump right into it. Um, well, this is just a little disclaimer notice saying that I am not your lawyer or your financial advisor. And so if you do require financial advice, legal advice, things like setting up your, like to what type of company to set up, all these things, you know, you should seek legal advice upon that because your situation is going to be totally different to other people's situation, right? And, and depending on the type of business that you want to set up, we're all in the entertainment and uh, entertainment industry in itself, in essence, really. And film can be educational, it can be entertaining, but there's a lot of different moving parts um, to it. So company structure, how you set up the ownership structure, those are things that you're really going to want to take a, a closer look at, right? And so you know, I just want to share that with you because when you're dealing with film, what we're dealing with, um, and film deals with, deals with music and fashion and, and design and art and a lot of different elements inside of it. Even someone's location can is being utilized in some in some cases, right? And those are things that you want to manage. You might want to manage the risk associated with that. And uh, and so maybe speaking with a lawyer and even a financial advisor in terms of setting up um, your company structure. These are things that you'll want to have that sort of discussion they about. Um, but today we're talking about monetization. Um, we're talking about why, why you're going to do it, what is it, and how we can make it happen. All right. And monetization in the simplest sense is the process of how you're going to make that money um, and get financial returns back to you. You can do that by selling a product or a service. Um, you can do it also via other means such as utilizing your content or some sort of platform. There are many different ways to do that. Um, one of the easiest ones is actually create, um, having ad advertising on a website or a platform or, or otherwise. And then we can go into other things like the e-commerce and the affiliate marketing and sponsorships, but all of them require roughly the same sort of uh, banking requirements, especially when you deal with online businesses. So we're going to talk about that, registering the U.S. business, we're going to get into that, all right? So um, a bit about me, uh, the company that I, I, I would have registered online recently would have been Gridshack, which is also another one of the companies that I have in terms of the whole structure of everything that I want, I want to deal with here. Um, Caribbean Am Studio is a Caribbean based company that does film and entertainment. But to monetize and to get that money from online sources and, and places like that, whether you want to set up your AdSense account, whether you want to, to get um, in terms of revenue from advertising, whether you want to get sponsorship deals and partnerships, right? Uh, these are things that you will want to have registered. Whether it is that you want to get 
uh, revenue from affiliate marketing. Um, we'll talk about affiliate marketing um, in, a short, in a short bit as well. Uh, regardless of whatever avenue you want to do, you're going to require um, some sort of account and you need an address to register that, to register that account too. Okay. So, um, but when, when we want to deal with this here now, for, the com for your company that you want to register, and I'm, I'm saying company, because even if you're, your company name is yourself, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a company, it's going to have an address, it's going, you're going to be an entity, and that entity has certain requirements, right? And when you want to register this business that you want to do, it allows you to do so many things, right? First of which that most excites most people is making money. Of course, you're going to want to pay people and you want to make a profit at the end, okay? So to do that, it means that we're going to need to do the whole legal registration. Uh, but before we get into the legal registration part, let's just talk about each of these areas, affiliate marketing um, and YouTube sales and product sales, all right? Now, even though most people will be familiar knowing about the YouTube partner program, which is um, the, the program that allows you to earn money by using YouTube, so some people say that my career, I'm a YouTuber, all these things like that. They become YouTubers because they would have met program eligibility requirements. Nowadays, require in the past, it, you could have become a, a YouTuber for much less requirements in terms of watch hours, in terms of subscribers, all right? And you can do that with what now, now the requirement is you must have at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. To make that happen, it's really a numbers game. Um, you have to be consistent with what you produce. Of course, you're gonna produce something that people like, uh, that will encourage subscribers. You can do many things to get subscribers, many different programs that you can, you can try to get subscribers. But the final point is those watch hours, right? You're going to want to get to reach that 4,000 watch hours or with the shorts, it's even more, but it's a bit easier with the shorts because people roll through shorts very quickly. And so they want to get um, the 10 million short, short views and those sort of things. But the more videos you produce, the more watch hours you're going to get. That is just simple metric of it all. Um, to get to the 1,000 subscribers, you're going to want to niche. So whether it's gonna be product reviews or it's going to be entertainment or kids entertainment or it's comedy or it's drama or some sort of storytelling. It, whatever you're looking to do, there's always something like that. It could be educational content and videos. There's always some sort of niche that you can create that allows you to eventually become monetized. But outside the monetization, you're still going to need to have a US address from uh, or an address from a jurisdiction that is identified by YouTube that they allow in terms of one of, them, uh, one of their allowed locations. They're going to either be a citizen of that country or you have a business registration in that country. And then finally, they're going to want to have a bank account within whatever that jurisdiction is going to be. Unfortunately, right now, Trinidad is not on that, um, on that list in terms of jurisdictions. Um, the United States, of course, is on, is on that list. And we're gonna talk about how, you, how you're going to register your business to do that. Now, of course, you can go to the US and get a, a US-based bank account, but you still don't have citizenship in the US. And those things can become um, barriers for you to do this business that you might want to do. Now, YouTube Partner Program is not the only way to become monetized, all right? There are other, other ways that you can become monetized, and one of the most familiar ones 
that people may have heard is affiliate marketing programs. Affiliate marketing programs allow you to utilize a link or a code that, that, that customers go and they click on and they eventually go to buy a product or a service, okay? Many websites now utilize, um, utilize codes, these same, these same codes for affiliate marketing programs. There's a benefit to them. They get more traffic to their website. And for you, you get a commission on that sale. The commission varies by each one of the uh, each each one of these websites. I just listed a few down here that you can that you can go and check out. It's Amazon, Etsy, TripAdvisor, TubeBuddy. Each of these, they are trying to encourage more people to come onto the site to visit the site. They need more hours of people being on the site. So you providing that uh, that service where you recommend a product or you recommend a service. You, um, these are things that you might put on your website. You might put it in your YouTube, your YouTube channel, right? Um, in particular, like Amazon, Amazon's, Amazon Associates, they have two programs. One where you have a website and it gives you links to do that. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna just give some snippets about what I did to get to that, to, to get to that phase. Um, then, you know, you have the, Influencer program, which is for people uh, that yeah, yeah. So this now allows people to go and um, utilize uh, utilize the link to get to buy stuff. All right. The basic process is a two-step process, which means that you sign up. You get the product link or code, and then you earn commission. But inside that point of earning commission, there's a little gray area where you have to register your tax compliance information. And they're going to require that you are in a country where they have tax compliances. All right, so that is, of course, one of the little areas that people do have problems with. Uh, another one of the areas where people can uh, acquire revenue from is AdSense. Now, AdSense can be done on a website, and I'll show you an example of a website after. But I wanted to ask, and this is really for people that are musicians or that you even do a podcast, right? You can register, you can register that podcast or whatever um, music or things that you have online. And wherever that music is being utilized on YouTube or otherwise, you can get ad revenue from that, okay? Um, we did that with one of our songs, it's called Wake Up It's Christmas, and it's utilized in different areas. And people, people, uh, people use that song and snippets from that song are found in different places. And wherever it is, people actually use that. Uh, another thing we did was we took the audio from some of the content that we, we were creating and we also registered that as well. So wherever that audio is used, we get a piece of that revenue uh, wherever it is online. So um, personally, we use DistroKid, but you can utilize any of these others like District, like CD Baby or TuneCo. Uh, I know, of course, these services vary, um, things that you might whatever you might require would be a little bit different, you know, depending on the reach of, uh, of what channels that they are connected to and how well that they pay back on each one of these services. So these are things that you will want to investigate for yourself. Um, you know, you want to make a good and conscientious decision in terms of what you want to do. And, Second example we had was websites. Now, Soka Woods actually is a website that people go to find Soka lyrics. And this site is full of AdSense. You would see this one right here at the bottom, the for Oasis. You don't, once it's set up, you just continue to collect money from that site, okay? And it, it's paid out to you sometimes. You can have checks mailed to you. 
or you can have the money sent to an account. It's easier for it to be sent to an account because you don't have to do anything much, it ends up in the account. Of course, a US account is best um, for you to get that so that you don't have Forex losses and other things like that. Um, right. So, um, so that was, of course, one, one another method for monetization. Another is that you have your website. Cam Studio has a website. We, st we sell T-shirts and other things like that. On the website, you can set up your PayPal and all these things. But of course, there's always going to be challenges. How are you going to receive that money in US dollars? How are you going to, how are you going to do that for international audiences? You will, of course, want an account that allows you to do that. And so each of these things, you can see that it is one thing that shares with all of it, which is that you need an account, all right? And so why register the US business? Well, it becomes quite clear. Oh, you know, I said, you can always ask a question in the middle whenever you want to, right? I'm, you know, quite open to answering questions, of course. So at any point in time, don't forget to ask questions so that, you know, we can, if there's any areas that you think that you need more information on, we can talk about that. Um, right. So why register a business? I think it's pretty clear. You need it to, to register for monetization. It allows you to become an entrepreneur. It allows you to do business worldwide. It allows you to access to access US banking, to access US income, uh, foreign exchange, for you to make more money, right? So the, the, the list of, of, of benefits is endless as to why you'd register a business. I'm now, sorry, question. Yeah. Sure. Um, we register a U.S. business. How does that work tax-wise? Are you going to discuss this part? Because, I mean, as soon as you register yeah. a business, does that mean we have to file a tax return every year, even though we're making minus zero dollars? Possibly. Yeah, you're, yes, you still will have to file a tax return. I mean, just like if you registered a business in, in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, you do have to file a tax return every year, even if you made no money. Uh, most people don't know that even if you are uh, not a limited liability company, but a sole trader, you should be putting forward your taxes, right? Even if you made no money, you still have to, you still have, you have to register your taxes. And in Trinidad, we have the, this, uh, this tax compliance unit that is, be, that, is, that is going to start up at the end of this year. That's something that you want to make sure that's happening for you. So it doesn't matter what country you're in, Registering your taxes is a normal part of business. How you register your taxes and you exercise something called tax management, not tax evasion, but tax management. Tax management allows you to pay the only taxes that you are required to pay, right? Because sometimes there are other areas that you might not need to pay. Take for instance, um, if you register your business, and you made income. Yes, you pay some tax on that income, but also the deductions such as your expenses or the capital expenses. When you say capital expenses, you're talking about large expenses. You might, and capital expenses could refer to anything from, if you're in the film industry, your cameras that you want to buy. It could be equipment. It could be a vehicle that you want to buy under your company name that you require to transport your equipment, your lighting equipment, sound, all that equipment falls under capital expenditures. Of course, some will be consumables, like wires and cables and stuff like that, but uh, which would fall under operating expenditure. But these things, there are a lot of deductibles that you can get from that, um, such as depreciation expenses and other things like that. Right. Sometimes if you are within a particular field or a particular area, you might want to seek a registration, like as a, uh, a creative business or a business that 
that supports creative businesses and they sponsor them or they sponsor airtime and things like that. Those become deductions, those become uh, other incentives for people doing business, All right? So those are things that you want to do. So of course you need to talk with a good accountant, um, and some, also someone that is register, a registered accountant preferably, so that you can get your stuff audited, which allows you now to get grants and other things like that for your business. So yes, registering your business and, and your taxes, they are normal part of it. As a person, if you are working, if you're working for a company, the company pays your taxes for you. But if you're a self-employed person, you're supposed to be registering your taxes, All right? And whatever that you spend on your business, whether it be gas money for, for, for driving and getting to your business or traveling, to get to do your business as a self-employed person, those are expenses. And you only pay money on the profits. So, and, you know, that's really how your, your business is set up. So sorry, can I ask you a question? Can we claim these expenses here in Trinidad on this US tax form number one? My second question is, um, if I remember correctly, when I was trying to open a bank account, which I haven't done in a while, I was trying to open a Republic bank account, and it was a question mark whether I had a U.S. bank account, if I remember correctly. How does that affect my banking here in Trinidad, having a U.S. bank account? And right. thirdly, we're talking about um, like YouTube monetization, and you said monetization, it has to be in one of the countries. So I'm assuming in any of these countries that you know, YouTube monetizes, we can open on a bank account. Yeah, basically, yes, you can. You can open up an account in the UK if you wanted to. Um, you know. And Brazil? In, huh? uh, so where, where can we find out where, which countries are monetiz monetizable on YouTube? Sorry. Right. Um, it's really just as, as, as simple as you can you can go to Google and do a, a quick search, but there's a list of there's a list of countries that monetize that do that monetization. The U.S. is one of the more, more utilized ones, okay? Uh, mainly because there's, a, there's a, a little bit of information, which is I, when you get views in the United States for your, for your videos, one view in the U.S. is worth more than a view in Trinidad and Tobago or another country. It's because of how they their the business structures are set up is because it's a marketing driven business and many other countries they don't have they don't companies don't flood their marketing dollars into youtube for those countries so those are some of the things that you will notice so when you want to register in those other countries remember you don't you won't be acquiring us dollars you'll be acquiring whatever that that income for that country would be they pay in US dollars, but then it comes to that account and it's not going to be in US. Okay, you're going to end up with Forex losses. So always better to utilize the country that mm -hmm. that um that you get the, the, the least Forex losses, right? So okay. yes, you can with another country, but just remember that sometimes when you register like your online banking and other things like that, they those things tend to become a bit more cumbersome for you. So I, just for simplicity, I'd probably suggest just using the US. But of course, as I said, I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant. I'm not, a, I'm not giving you um, direct financial advice or legal advice. It's just for simplicity. I would use, uh, me personally, I would use the US. Um, right. I just have one other question regarding clicks and views. When you said it, setting up the, um, when you, I, I've been told, or it's been suggested that when you set up a YouTube account, it's better to actually physically set up the YouTube or any kind of social online media account in America or in another country outside of Trinidad and Tobago because of the algorithms. Um, um, I mean, are you aware of that? Um, not necessarily true, you know. Uh, you know, it, it's what they really wanted to know was whether your account is registered in the United States, all right? That's something that you just click around and you just change your location, okay? 
You don't need to worry about all that. Every video that you produce, though, you can click which, which country that video was shot in or other stuff like that. Those things help the algorithm to search for people when they're searching and finding because the algorithm would collect information about you, um, such as the location where the person is viewing it from, the location, what questions that person asks in the algorithm, what are their preferences, and all these things come together to make that um, to make that video suggestion for viewers. But in terms of receiving revenue, it's all the same, right? It's about what what country you're registered in, where do you have your banking information. It doesn't matter if you're doing it on YouTube or Facebook or otherwise. 99% of these companies that have um, monetization deals and arrangements will utilize the United States because one, it's a large land mass, a large land mass with a large population of people that and the market is already prepared for, um, for advertising and, and marketing and these sort of things. The structures, the industry structures are, are designed that way. And so when people pay for advertising, they have, there's a higher demand. And higher demand means you attract a higher cost, right? So that's really that. You, you are asking about US businesses and we're, we're gonna talk now about registering your US business. Now, setting up a US business, simple, four-step process. You find a registered agent. Now, I, I list three down here, but there are several agents out there. These are just some of the more familiar ones. Uh, let me just list out the first four, and then we'll talk about that. So find a, find a registered agent. You pay the fee. You pay the fee. You, you, know, you, you do all the signups and everything. And then we you sign up your, your incorporation documents and you register your tax information. That's gonna be your SS4 document um, so that you can get a tax ID. The EIN number is your tax ID, all right? So when you register a US business, you become an, it becomes an entity. That entity is treated almost like, almost like a person that it has a location, it has, a, it has an address. It has an incorporation date, which is like, you know, like a birthday. It has a date for filing to let you know that it's still alive during your annual returns, right? It has, it pays taxes. So it, it behaves almost like a person, right? And because of this, this allows you to register your business and to do business in the US. Also, you can get, um, you can get a pass, you can get your visa for an entrepreneurship visa in the United States. Really, and so it's good that you can set up your business, you can do other things, you can attend conferences, all these things when you're doing your business. These are things that you want to do, all right? But we, I digress. You find your registered agent. These agents, um, they exist in different states. You can register in any state that you want to in the United States, but the more familiar ones that people would utilize is Wyoming and Delaware. Uh, now, because they have better tax laws and they also have better registration laws. Wyoming allows you to register a company uh, anonymously. So people don't know who the owners of the company directly, they can't just go and find that just like that, okay? And the Delaware, the Delaware um, companies, they allow you to, yes, you can register the companies online, uh, but they have better tax laws and better, better corporate laws. So if you want to deal with businesses and you're doing business to business transactions or even B2C transactions that business to customer, these things allow you to do that. Okay, so when you want to when you want to register, you have to think about that in your mind and say, what do I prefer? Do I prefer some level of anonymity? Do I prefer a better tax, you know, better better laws for my business so that my business is protected much better? Okay, uh, and you know, it also depends on what you want to do further 
own, like, do I want to become a, do I want to do an IPO for my business and get, and get um, investments? So Delaware companies are used a lot um, for, for that purpose. In fact, you know, when you, when you think about any company that has an IPO, most of them are registered in Delaware. So those are things that you want to think about, okay? Uh, so there are, many, there are many agents out there. These are just a few trusted ones. And one in the middle is called Wyoming Registered Agents. All right. um, you have Delaware Registered Agents. You have Delaware Inc. You have um, Harvard Business Services. So it's many things that you can utilize to do that. And there's no, there's no end to that. If, you, if anybody knows, everybody always getting sued in the US. There's a bunch of lawyers all over the place, people acting as agents, but these are just some of your more trusted agents that people would go with. You can find agents anywhere. You just do a simple Google search. These are just some of the top three that come up, okay? Um, so agent fees. Now, they vary because of the type of services that they offer, um, what you might want to do, um, also the, 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 the state that you're registering in. Each of these things vary. Okay, um, so most of them will charge probably about 150 US and depend on the additional services that you want. Like you want, a, you want an address, you want a place to get your documents if someone sends information to you, you want a forwarding address, you might want those kind of things. You might want a phone number, a US phone number that you can reroute to your phone number down here in, in Trinidad. Okay, so and you can also go online and make US calls, US to US calls at, at no additional cost. All right. So those are things that you might want to, to get as you pay more fees and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so of course you're the study, you're the study documents and then the EIN number. Uh, I utilize Wyoming here so that you can see what, what is done. Okay. Um, this is just an example of some services that people might ask for, like phone service and uh, corporate CEO, uh, you know, registering your business. These are things that you can, you can do, okay? Yeah. So, you know, just this is an example of what it might look like when you do an incorporation, the document, when it's filed, everything like that. This is just what it might look like. Um, this company in this case is called Gridshack. Okay, so this is what it'll look like when you finish pilot and your tax documents will say X, Y, and Z. Of course, when you're registering your tax documents, it's a quick note, a US mailing address is not necessary. You don't need a US mailing address for your tax documents. They just want to mail the documents to you for you to do your registration. All right, you can utilize FedEx to send it back as you want and you move forward, okay? Um, but if you do choose to utilize a US mailing address, you must ensure that you have written permission to use that US address for that purpose. Because let's say you, you want to ask your family member to do something like that, and then they start to see documents coming to them and they say, no, 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 I, I didn't expect this. You want to have something saying, yeah, you did say that. If you don't want to do that anymore, you know, you move up, of course you move on to another address. But these are things that you want to have done, right? So everything, you want to get it in writing. These things happen, right? So Amazon, uh, you know, I, did, I just did up a little thing here about registering with Amazon and Amazon Associates. Really, really simple, straightforward um, operation. Okay. So you have Amazon Associates here. They're gonna, and this is exactly what the page looks like when you Google Amazon Associates, you, it will lead you to them. Most people would have an Amazon account, but preferably you want to use your business account when you're doing this thing. So you wanna switch over to your business account. Um, you can register your Amazon business account after you get your business registration documents, okay? It takes about two weeks to a month 
to get the incorporation done within a week or two, and then the tax, the tax ID information might take maximum about a month, right? So those are things that you want to consider. So you start your registration, and then you tell them what website you want to do. You know, of course, you want to buy a web, you want to you know purchase a website, you want to set that up, um, hosting your website, it's plenty of hosting sites. You know, this talk is not about hosting sites, but you can utilize many. There's, you know, GoDaddy, Bluehost, you know, there's several, many of them that you can utilize. Um, and we talked about Amazon Associates, which was really, if you wanted to do like a blog site or, or a site that sells products or services or other things like that, they're gonna, um, you know, of course, who you sell it to, um, what type of market that you're, that you're positioning it for. Take for instance, like Amazon here, they see at the bottom, if you have anything that's going to children that are under 13, the traffic sources aren't eligible. So of course, if you're doing kids content, you know, you might want to separate your, your stuff so that it's, uh, it's done appropriately to the right, the right people, all right? And then after that, they give you, they ask you for, you know, what ID number you want. You tell them what you want to do. In this case, I just wrote something here saying, we provide authentic experiences and information about games and toys or film or whatever you want to say. It could be a blog, it could be a niche, a site that is just, you know, it's content driven. It could be a site that, that just for searching and, it, you know, stuff like that. People do things like coupons and other types of deals. All right. And then they say, congrats, hey, you registered, a, you registered something with the program and then they want you to do your tax information, which is why I said, make sure your taxes are set up, all right? Now, right, so where were we? Right, you know, just to kind of close up here, I want to show you, you know, registering here, we just, I show you Wyoming registered agents, this little symbol here, all right? You want to register your corporation, there's different types of corporations, uh, each one has its, its benefits and drawbacks. So you might have an LLC and those things. So your LLC will give you a certain, uh, a certain class for where you're taxed, right? It might allow you to utilize your personal business and your funds to, to come in a little bit. Not an ideal situation for you. Um, also, it depends on your taxes and how you file your taxes. So it, all this depends. So that's why I say you want to talk with a, a financial advisor on this, um, determine on whether you want to do an LLC or uh, a corporation. It could be a C-Corp, an S-Corp, different types of um, corporations. You have closed corporations, which are for small, like family type businesses. You have different types of corporations that you can set up. So just do a, a little read up about each one. Um, you know, get some advice. There are plenty. There are sources. There's a remedy source uh, for uh, for getting legal advice for five five dollars US. So lots of different sources that are available to you. Different filing options, right? And how you choose to do that, right? There are different different additional services that you can request, like getting your tax ID, right? If you don't have an SSN, which is your, your personal identification, you have to get it without the SSN because you're away, right? You're gonna, some, you might ask for phone service. This phone service allows you to, I was mentioning that earlier, but it allows you to, to receive a phone call from the US as if you know you have a US business, you receive that call on your phone right here. All right, it's a, it's a digital phone. It's just a, you know, the phone is forwarded, the call is forwarded to your phone. And then you can go on the site and, and utilize the phone as well to make calls. And then, you know, you want to do other things like that. You might want an address or a virtual office. These things are really important. If you already have your things set up and you have people to work and stuff like that, you 
and you want to set up a phone calls and, and to receive documents and you know all these things like that, then maybe a virtual office is for you. Right? There are many um, companies with different uh, setups with different types of services that they offer to you. So you know you can. There's no limit to what you what you could uh, get people you know in terms of agents to do for you. Right. So we showed Amazon Associates, Delaware, it's the same thing, right? They're gonna ask you the exact same thing. After, after you register and you set up your account, they're gonna ask you to, they're gonna ask you to do, uh, you know, to do your tax information. This is of course where you're putting your bill in and your card, credit card information, right? So yeah. So that's generally all you really need to do. At the end of the whole thing, you get some you get some nice little pretty documents, all right? And these are just two of those documents here. Your corporate incorporation document. You have articles of incorporation. You get your incorporation certificate. You get all that, and that allows you now with your ID and information and numbers and stuff like that. It allows you to go and register for Amazon affiliates or if you if you are eligible for YouTube partner programs to, to register there okay um you know and to do the YouTube partner program you just go in you click you go to you go to YouTube studio and you click on earn right um just to just to show you right Yeah. You can go to YouTube anytime you want. Anytime you want. You go there, you go to your studio. Right? And you go down to earn. All right? It tells you exactly what you need to do to apply and become monetized. It is, it is in rocket science. All right? So that's really it there. Um, if you have any questions, um you know feel free to ask questions but that kind of brings an end to the presentation of how to become registered online um and filing your tax documents you know everything is done via your registered agents so you can so you can do that and then when you file your taxes you just file them directly because they they're mailed to you you fill out the documents you can you can get a an accountant to assist you, you can pay for an accountant, or you can fill up the taxes yourself if you feel so competent. You do that and you pay your taxes, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Oh, uh, I didn't get to the last part, which was the registering a, an account. So after you get the, the documents and your company is signed up, you know what I did? I didn't mention it, I didn't mention that. How you're going to do your your bank account? Now there are different places that you can do your bank account, okay? Uh, and when you want to do that, there are plenty. There are many different sources. You can just say online bank account, okay? So there's many many bank accounts, and instead of that, we want to say US. All right, and um, there are different sources. People utilize different things like that. Um, you can use Bank of America. There's one called Mercury.com. Okay, Mercury allows you to, to, to log in and sign in and everything like that. And you operate a bank account just like, just like any other person. And you can go there and register that. It just requires like your passport information. It's the same, the same thing that you require, actually a little bit less than what you require in Trinidad. Um, and to set up an account in Trinidad and Tobago, you need, of course, your, your identification information. You're going to need um, to sign up the documents, your incorporation documents for your company. They want a business plan. They also want you to do, uh, uh, I believe it's a, a letter, from the company and a, a board resolution note to register your business. Um, 
and across a group of address. So there's a lot of things that they're going to ask there. And online, you have a registered address. This is the address for your mailing. That, that's what they're asking you for. They want your, your passport information. They will want your incorporation information. Once they verify that and they verify who you are, you know, you take a picture of yourself holding your, holding your ID, things like that. Um, that's it. You're registered. Um, and mainly because their, their structures, their tax compliance structures, all those things are in place and, and they're much better regulated in the US than, than what we have in China yet. Now, remember, not yet. Those things might be coming quite soon. Um, so those are things that you want to really just think about when you are when you're registering your business. And so that that brings an end to the minimal presentation. Leslie Ann, over to you. Any questions and any questions? Yes, thank you so much. So if you have any questions, feel free to put your hand up and you can ask. We have 12 more minutes for lunch and lane. I hope you all did actually have lunch. Two questions. You know, they have, I know you'll have questions. <laughs> um, me again, I'm sorry, I can't find the put my hand up. Um, That's fine. right. Um, so are you saying that the only way that we can become monetized on YouTube is to open an account? Because obviously, I don't know if anybody else here, but I'm a total trini. And um, when I hear about filing taxes, I want to run in the other direction. So is there any other, um, no offense to you? Um. <laughs> Okay, so filing taxes is not a big deal. Um, I understand. I think, but I think a lot of people get, mm -hmm. people get a little bit apprehensive about it. And um, rightly so, because um, fear of the unknown is a real thing, right? It is a real thing. Uh, and maybe, and that stops a lot of people from just starting to become a greater person, right? So diving in is really just all that, all that you can do as you know as a creative and getting into it but yes there are other ways that you can do it um but remember that you just will not get the the income and if before you lose money on foreign exchange you lose money understand that bit, right? yeah so foreign exchange if you want to you you get us dollars and then it comes across to Trinidad and tobago depending on what that exchange rate is on the day you you'll make a little bit less. Oh. But um so uh, um but but I, I was watching a YouTube video and someone has a YouTube video from Trinidad mm -hmm. and Tobago that said that um to get um your business if you are able to get your business monetized monetized on YouTube, all you have to do is join AdSense and well obviously there's a UTT problem there, TTUS mm -hmm. um problem but you can become monetized on youtube once yeah. you meet their parameters once you join on adsense and, and with adsense all you need is a website i think so far that's where i've gotten so far to adsense and i need to have an, a website launched to actually fully or well to get to the next step of uh, uh, right. registering on adsense okay. okay and then when you get that money now from adsense you get paid a check coming to trinidad and to be in pt yes i understand yes. that part, not, in but... TT, not in tt it comes in us all right. right. And when you when you go to the bank with that US dollar check, there's a fee to cash that check in the bank. OK, mm -hmm. there's a fee that comes with, that comes with that. That's money that you're losing. Yeah, you're totally that, that. you know. OK, secondly, uh, is there a local company that can do all of this for us for a fee? Yeah, that that they can do the, the setup and they can do the, you know, that you utilize the services and stuff like that. Uh, maybe not for YouTube because every YouTube account requires like one registered person per YouTube, per, per monetized YouTube account. There's a requirement there for that, at least so far, right? No, I'm so, going to set up the US um, account and go through the entire process you just described. Um, well, you, you go to the agents. The agents assist you with setting up the account. So they'll have phone calls with you. They will write to you via email, they will tell you the things that, that are required there, right? To set up the account. So those are things that, you know, you don't really need a, someone to do that. All of it is really, you get that and you just do a simple Google search, make sure you, you, you know, you read the content and, and you look at that there. And there's don't, one more thing. Sorry, 
Mm -hmm. Sorry, Nisha, I, I'm seeing two questions in the chat that I think you should really answer regarding the annual charges. And if you already have a TT company, I don't know if you have seen the questions. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So to register the account, there's one charge, right? It's a one-time charge in most cases, right? Um, to forward the documents to you, there's an annual cost for that. To maintain a, to, you know, so additional services like phone, the phone service, um, having a registered address, these are annual costs that you're going to have to pay for your business to continue running. They're not expensive because once you're doing, once you're doing, now, once you're doing this YouTube thing or, or, or other things, because people think that um, people that make money online just make it from one source. They don't. They don't. They, they, they have a website that links to the, if they're selling products, it links to a product that they're selling or they have a sponsorship agreement. Um, in Camp Studio, we had a sponsorship agreement before we even started doing YouTube reviews. And so those things happen, right? You don't need particularly YouTube for doing that, but it's how you register your business, how you talk with the companies. It's all about the metrics that you are able to provide to them, right? So, so when you're looking for, those, those sort of things, everybody's looking at dollars and cents and it's a metric scheme, right? More eyes that view it, the more, the more chances of them getting people that are interested or become aware of, of some sort of market or product or service, right? So that is really what it's all about. It's just, it's related in that, in that sense, right? So when you talk with, potential sponsors or partners or, or people like that. You want to you want to inform them about the type of reach that you can get. Right? The, the networks that you that you can access, the people that that you can access. And these are things that, that make you special. They're called your unfair advantage. Okay. And your unfair advantage is what makes you special and you unique and that no one else can take it away from you. Okay. Yeah. Um, there were some questions in the in the chat. What okay? Using Winscribe VPN, right? Registering a Gmail account. Those things are yeah, yes, you can. You can use it, but it doesn't make much of a difference. Your address is your address. At the end of it, you still have to put down an address in the um when you're registering on on with um Gmail. All right. You still have to put an address in there. And having an address is, you know, that's important. But how you monetize and where your banking is done, that's what they want to know. They want to know where your banking is done. Do you have a credit card that's in the US? Oh, so, you know, I, I showed you Mercury earlier, but they have, you know, some of these bank accounts, they give you a digital credit card that you can utilize or you can fund, you can fund that account. So allow allows you to continue paying and that you can pay out for whether you need to pay for Amazon products or services to continue doing your business. Let's say you need to buy cameras and stuff like that. You run that through your business. You can set that up, connect that to your QuickBooks or whatever type of software that you want to, to do to register your, your taxes. You know, fun fact, QuickBooks actually also offers services like filing your taxes and paying your taxes for you, right? As long as you do all your, your documents through there, it's, there's no there's no hard work to do inside there, all right? There really isn't any. So when you register your business, they, everything is set up there that you, the, the systems are set up that you could just pay your taxes with the click of a button, all right? Sorry, can I just um, add something? I'm not sure if this is still the case and I'm not sure if this will circumvent having to file a business in the US, but if all that is needed as a bank account to become monetized on YouTube and other social media channels. Um, five years ago, I went with my husband at the time to New York for a conference and he registered a bank account at Capital One without a social security number. Right, He's, yes, without the SSN, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if that helps in that circumvents or having to have the cost of registering you a can. business and the worry of paying taxes every year. You can <laughs> register, yes, you can register a bank account without an SSM, that is totally possible. But of course, sometimes they require you to be there in person. Also, you have to remember your tax 
rate that you're going to get is going to be much higher as an individual and not as a company. So as an individual, you pay, you're going to pay an income tax. You're going to pay, you know, you're going to be in a different tax bracket. As a company, you can deduct, you can put in deductions much easier. All right. So those are things that, you know, just to think about. Um, so you think the IRS will still come to me, even if it's just a personal bank account I have yes. registered? Yes, 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 you still have to You're not that. circumventing the system at all, really, is what you're saying? No, no, there's okay. no circumventing the system in the United States. Uh, okay. um, also, as a, as a business, you don't need to take funds out of the business and pay yourself as a worker. You could pay yourself a dividend, a dividend, right? You can, you will ask earlier also about paying yourself here in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, you could pay yourself as a contractor or you could pay yourself a dividend. You could pay, you could register a company here and collect the dividend and the dividend, you don't have any taxes on, on I, don't, I don't believe there's any taxes on dividends for Trinidad registered companies. So those are things that you can think about. And of course, again, talk to an accountant, an auditor, someone that is registered with the, with, um, with, with the chartered associations, right? So, but, you know, these are things that you can do to get paid, right? So you don't need to necessarily to pay yourself a salary. You can pay yourself a dividend, right? And they, they come at, the dividends come at lower tax rates more times than not, all right? Any other questions, all right? This said, are the annual charges? All right, so it is 1 p.m. So thank you so much. And we just want to do a quick poll to ask if you're ready. Yep, so just answer a quick poll for us. And we want to thank you for joining our lunch and learn. And thank you, Sario, for your amazing, you. brief, and concise presentation. Sorry. And we'll see you all. Oh, Jer I'll go ahead. Sorry, no, I just want to say hi to my nephew. Oh, <laughs> no. Hi. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> it is right. Okay, good job. Good job, Zara. Thanks a lot. Good job. Let them know you can't right, so you can answer the call. That. <laughs> And Excuse then you can have a good day. <laughs> okay, thank you, Misha. Oh, who, who is the moderator? Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Film TT. Bye. Enjoy your Bye. lunch. Bye. Answer the poll and then y'all can go. Thank you. Thanks, Ariel. Mm. And we'll see y'all next week if y'all agree that y'all want more lunch and lanes with, with us and our amazing stakeholders like Ariel. Okay. <laughs> same website number. I mean, same Zoom number. Yeah, we'll send out. We'll send out the link. Okay. Um, once we're doing it. Okay, all right. And who will be on there? Next week. Uh, we may yeah. do a bit of film financing next week. Uh, we'll Ooh. confirm. We'll send out the email okay. on how to raise funds. Maybe we can talk about different things. Uh, we can do okay. film budgeting if that's a concern. Um, line producing, assistant directing, okay. script supervising, anything uh, really, okay. whatever the concerns are. Okay. Okay, you are Miss Kate Moran. Okay. Yes. All right. Good, good job. Good job. Keep it up, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining. Uh -huh. Thanks, everyone. All right. All right. Bye now. Bye bye. You don't seem to have any responses, eh? You don't need to click. Well, people want it every Friday. <laughs> You have it, you have the results. I can close it, right? Because some people might not be actually by the computer. Sorry. Some people might not be there. Mm -hmm. Thank you.